I've got a few just sample textures here. And when it comes to texturing, much like building up forms, it, it's really about layering, layering up textures and not trying to get it all in, in one go. So, I mean, obviously there's going to be some, uh, some ridges and some lines that are, are cut in fairly deep. So I'm just going to use this spot uh, here as a, as a bit of a demo. So we can cut in lines, wrinkles that are, are, are fairly deep. Um, and we can also, like we did with the uh, polymer sculpt, we can also build up ridges. So if we need an extra little fold of skin, we can, you know, we can put it along the, the edge and we can blend that in. I'm trying to use some pretty drastic raking light so, um, so you can see we can trench, trench these lines out. You know the drill. However, because we're working with a fairly smooth and fairly regular surface, um, it can sit. It can sit a little bit, a little bit flat. Um, we want everything to be integrated. So when we when we think about skin texture, particularly on a, a kind of a concept sculpt. Um, get away with going a little overboard on on texture again I um, if there's a wrinkly bit I like to make it uh, extra wrinkly um, so those lines uh, look okay but it's still it's still really just lines on a on a relatively smooth surface so I'm talking about the importance of of layering things up we want we want some basic texture on on the skin first, and so a way I like to do that is um, just by by putting some bumps in. So this is a tool uh, that I made with just some uh, some copper rod shoved in this in this brass tubing and just ground off the ends, um, not totally evenly. And I just kind of use this like a like a tattoo gun to start. And I'm not trying to go overboard on how hard I'm pressing or how how deep I'm going. Um, I don't I don't need it to look like you know acne scars from from head to toe. But I do want to break up that that surface a bit. So I could start with something like that. Then I have this other crazy tool that's built from uh, diff different guitar strings. I can kind of just rake that across. That starts to, you know, tone down some of those those edges. And I'll use my my little sponge again. see that so there's still you know there's still the irregularity um, still some pretty deep pock marks but uh, kind of flatten it out so we carve it in and then and then flatten it out and then if we start going in with lines over top of that then our lines aren't sitting just on a, a flat kind of uninteresting surface. Again, I, I like to use this tool or, or something like it. Um, toothbrush works great. I kind of follow the line, follow the direction of the of the lines. Let's tone them down a little bit. The other thing that works good is a like a bristle brush and I've cut it off so it's a, a little bit a little bit stiffer. So now our lines are 
and our overall surface has a bit of life to it. So I, I will probably use this, this tool over the, in, the entire surface. Now, for some folks, um, working directly on the clay uh, is is a little bit too is a little bit too harsh, and it does tend to throw up those those little bits of clay. So, working through some plastic wrap, so just like a Ziploc bag that's been cut apart in different um, different plastics, different thicknesses, will give you a slightly different result. Plastic. What the plastic is doing is it's softening the edges of, of all of those marks and it's not going to be throwing up those little bits of clay so harsh. You can see that so if we just give it a, a really really light sponge I mean, it kind of looks like goosebumps a little bit. Just rake that a bit. All right, so I th think you're starting to see the, the concept of, of layering up marks. You will not get it with a single tool applied a, a single time. Then I can use the um, plastic again and just a, a kind of a blunt uh, needle tool. I wanted to put in some, some wrinkles. Kind of crossing them up. So this is gonna wrink, this would be like for wrinkly neck skin. And then I would brush that back again. I'm gonna try the brush. And I might, you know, layer up the same techniques over and over a few times. You'll get a slightly different effect brushing like across the lines versus over the lines. And then sponge. So Fairly subtle, but still, you know, um, has some. This, the skin now has some some wear and tear on it. Could further soften some of those lines by pounding this in again. To some pretty wrinkly skin, but you notice I keep crossing the lines up. Okay, so that's uh, that's not you know. Not terribly well placed in terms of the the wrinkles that would be on on the neck here. Um, I'll be looking I'll be looking at you know areas like this uh, under the eye um, around the mouth. I'll be um, you know accentuating some of that, but really drawing these lines out, particularly on this eye where uh, where it's kind of folded up because of the because of the expression can make things that are a little more uh, uh, reptilian a little more alien 
And if you look at some some reptiles, I'll just make a couple uh, lines here. So you can start with you know, kind of a grid. Think about where um, you know. Think about how those lines would move around the uh, the geometry. So we start with a basic grid. And we can kind of round off the the edges so it doesn't look quite. Um, so the geometry is not quite as hard edged. This needs to cover a fairly large area to be convincing. Um, you know, these four squares are are going to look okay. They're not going to look great. But it's an interesting way to start to build up some some pattern. So then, over top of that. those lines in again through the plastic this time to keep those soft edges it's okay if they don't follow the original lines I could go back and forth on them a little bit one technique on top of the other so uh, you can imagine this over a uh, larger area could be uh, could be kind of interesting. The same with our little warts and and moles and blemishes. Thing to watch if you're sticking little pieces on when you when you brush the texture in that you don't they don't just flick right off um, which is always a risk but you can always start over so I'll just gently kind of work around them and over top of them where you have to be careful where you can just they can just fly right off Everything's, everything's integrated. That would be the same for constructing um, any type of, of little vein or, or something. Um, you want to make sure it feels blended and not, not just uh, stuck on top. On and on. OK, 
Okay, so that is how I am going to approach the, uh, the overall flesh. Uh, what I'll do is I'll start by putting, you know, some of that irregular texture over the whole thing. Now that I've, you know, spent so long smoothing it out, I'll go and texture the entire thing, but at least it's intentional texture. It doesn't look like tool marks. And then I'll start really digging in, uh, again, around the eyes, around the mouth, where, where we would typically see uh, these kinds of, of wrinkles. So to repeat it once more, it's really about layering up the techniques. Don't just try to pick one tool and hope that you can get the entire, you know, finished texture in, in one shot. Uh, lay some texture down, use, go through some uh, sheet plastic to keep it subtle layer lines on top of it, brush it out over and over, keep building it up uh, until you have, you know, until you have something that that uh, just seems a little more interesting. When you're drawing in the lines, remember to follow the geometry and the muscles that we've, that we've put on. Our wrinkles end up in very specific places because of the way our muscles work around our eyes and around the corner of our, our mouth. <laughs>